Well, hey neighbors, and welcome to the Shed Shop. In this edition of How To, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm working on my neighbor's kit. We're going to be working on a steel 028 AB Super. Uh, this is neighbor John Luna's saw, Jonathan Luna. Your saw's right here, neighbor. I just caught your chain brake band on fire, just like we did your sprocket, because it had all kinds of melted, filthy, vile, disgusting plastic all over it. Hey, listen, neighbors, this video is going to be largely from a neighbor to see his saw worked on. I'm going to try and teach you how to do some things. We're going to put some brand new AV mounts in this. Uh, it's got to have a new needle cage bearing. Uh, we've replaced some parts with some used parts because the parts are obsolete, one. And two, we can save my neighbor a bunch of money replacing some plastic gears with used ones that are not worn out at all uh, instead of buying brand new ones. And so that's what we'll do. Uh, we put Formatech crankshaft seals in this saw. And I did a video of how to install the crankshaft seals on this saw. And you can see how much time it takes a guy that has shaky hands and likes to do things right. Uh, how long it takes even with uh, specialty sleeves uh, to do this stuff. Um, like crankshaft seals on one of these models. And so that being said, neighbors, I think uh, I, I just want to give you a brief uh, kind of an update on the shed shop work that's going on. Uh, Neighbor Aaron came by, neighbor Ace, he's on the channel. He came by and picked up his MS200T. There's the toy saw. That's the, the punctured gas tank. That's been holding gas right there. And I've hung it on a hook. It's holding gas. Uh, the repair seems okay, but I haven't started the saw yet. Uh, I did speak to neighbor Cody. He's just like the rest of us. Got a lot of life going on. Uh, working on his vehicles, trying to get them up to par and, and just staying busy. Um, and so we'll, we'll hopefully uh, have that saw either delivered to him very soon or he'll be able to come pick it up and view the other saws that I've gotten since the last time he was here because he likes old saws. Uh, listen, neighbors Robert and Ted uh, and John, Jonathan, uh, Eric, everybody that, that comments on, on the videos and, and gives input, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please keep it up. I really appreciate it. It's encouraging. And damn it, if you've won prizes, it's okay. You can claim the prizes. Uh, don't not claim your prizes by sending me your your uh, address in my email, smallageredemption at gmail.com because you think that I can't afford to give the prizes away. That, that bin down there is prizes only. Okay, and that chit's going to get given away at some point. And so if you've already won and all you've got to do is claim it, just go ahead and claim it because I don't want to have to give it away again. Okay, just let me send that chit to you for free, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, I got this nice 290 in. That neighbor Eric brought as trade-in of our original deal. Uh, and it, it looks to be in good condition. It, it feels to have strong compression. I haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, except fire it up for another neighbor that bought an 029 uh, from the pawn shop. Okay. And then I'm trying to decide what to do. I got this real nice 266SE vintage saw. And I'm trying to decide what to do about the coil. Don't know if I'm going to get Chinese one or not. I don't know. Neighbors will see. And then... We've got a 170 back here that I've still got to change the carburetor out on, but it's it's for sale. It's it's ready to go, basically. I just know it's a carburetor issue. That's all. Uh, so it, it has a little bit of a boggy throttle. Uh, and so I've rebuilt another carburetor to put on there. Just haven't done it because nobody bought a saw yet. And then I got neighbor Eric's other 028 in here. Finally, finally getting washed. Uh, I split his crankcase to see if I could hopefully cut the crank off somehow. For the clutch that didn't come off, but it doesn't look like it. But we're going to go ahead and build him an 028 Super. And and then I don't know what I'm going to do with that 028 regular cylinder that came off of this. I'll probably put it on another, another saw and attach the story of the tree being dropped on that saw to the new saw with the old motor. <laughs> we'll see. Because it's not a Super. But we're going to give neighbor Eric a Super. Why not? And, and, and that's about it, neighbors. I got the 192T up here that I think I'm just going to keep. I like having a top handle saw, and that saw has uh, various things that I was not happy with having to sell it for what I've got into it. So opposed to lose money on it, I think I'll just keep it because the neighbor that was going to buy it never came for it. So that's okay. Uh, and, and that's it. With that being said, neighbors, uh, that's just a little bit of an update. We're just going to keep on grinding. We're going to keep on working. And I realized with all this footage that I take, uh, it's only a quarter of the work I'm doing inside the shed shop, and I still am trying to get it all loaded to the boob tube and, and fight memory and everything else. Uh, I'm looking at buying a, a, a GoPro. I don't know. You guys tell me down in the comments below what you think of a GoPro for the channel. If, if you think it'll make the video content better and make my life easier, even though I got chitty internet and it still takes forever to load stuff, 
but then I wouldn't have to worry about memory issues. The thing is, neighbors, I've got so much footage to go through for you guys. It's already on the boob tube. It's just not edited yet, okay? I will get it there. i got all kinds of stuff for you. But I want to have to start doing less footage, I think, so I can get more work done until I get a bigger shop. And then I can slow down and, and really, really focus on bringing you guys just incredibly good edited uh, content with different things with slides in it and everything else that I know I like and I know you like and and we will will get to that but tell me what you guys think of the GoPro or if there is a different affordable option you think will work for the Chainsaw Redeemer and with that this video might be a little bit messy neighbors I'm just I've been trying to get organized for three days so I'm just starting to get us all back on the bench again and uh, I just got to keep going. I got to roll with it. And so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something. We're going to start right away with putting two OEM uh, AV mounts in Jonathan Luna's Steel 028 AV Super. All right. So here you go, neighbors. So basically, we have to replace the front tube. The back one's good. Uh, Jonathan brought over some AV mounts, uh, but he brought them during my rest time. And so he left them in the mailbox and I've discovered they're the wrong ones. Um, we don't have to replace his rear one. Uh, he brought some aftermarkets. They're too big. They're they're going to be an 1121 part number, I think, not 1122 for like the 036 and 360. Okay, so this is your front AV mounts, OEM for the steel 028. Okay, here's your part number. 1122-790-9905-1122-790-9905. I'll do my best to try and put a link or uh, try to put that part number in the description. Okay, the, the greatest advice I can give you if you're doing AV mounts, neighbors, is lubrication, lubrication, lubrication. If you don't got nothing else, just spit on them if you're if it's your salt, damn it. You can use stuff like this. I did pick up more uh, penetrating oil, and this is almost a good way to pre-treat these things because it does, it does penetrate into the rubber, and I think it's just a theory. Uh, do your fact checking. I think this increases the longevity of rubbers. I've used it on saws, old saws old rubbers and it seems to help them out so uh and then the second part of advice i can give you is is uh clean the area really well and then like i said just lubricate it really well i've got press oil and so that is what i'm going to use okay and then uh these are going to go in you can't you can't uh as easily get them in from the back if you go this way they don't go in as easy okay so i like to go in from the front as long as my handle's off. If my handle's not off, they're kind of hard to get through. You can still do it, but it's kind of hard. Okay, so I'm just going to lubricate right here. That's the hardest part to get in from the front. Okay, I'll set that down in there. Okay. And the important thing is to make sure you get it to snap in flush. If it's a brand new OEM AV mount, they're not that hard to put in. Okay, they're really not if your tank's out of the way. If your tank is on there... They're, they're a little bit harder to get out than they are to get in. Um, but the problem with getting them in with the tank right there is sometimes you can't quite push it hard enough with having an AV mount on the other side already. Okay. Now, actually, I'm trying to think. If I remember right. I do believe this one is easier to go from the other side. I cannot recall. Let's see if we can get it to go down in there. Yep, it will go. Okay, that's it. Now this one does set a little recessed, okay? On this side, it is supposed to be recessed. The important thing is to, to see it uh, sitting down in its groove, just like there was a groove on this side, okay? So that's where those go. All right. Uh, we've got quite a bit to do to this saw, and quite a bit of it we can do before or after we put our handle on. But the next thing we need to go ahead and put on is our boot. We want to go ahead and put that on, okay? Uh, Jonathan's boot was good. It was in good condition, and I've got plenty of extras, but his is fine. We can use it. It is an OEM steel still, and on these boots, you've got to line up your, your mark here with the center mark on your cylinder, okay? That's very important. You want to get this right, okay? So what I'll do is since the mark's on the bottom, I'll start my bottom exactly where it needs to be. Okay, and then I'll work the top around and put it on. Okay, and I think I'm a little bit twisted on this, I am. So I'll have to redo that. Well, maybe I can get it to turn. I think I can. Yep, there we go. I didn't need much. Okay, so you can see how I've lined that up. 
right the left side of that with the crease on the motor okay there's that and then you've got your band to hold that on I like to put the screw on this side facing up because then I can screw it easy and it feels like I actually have to loosen this I got a lot of good stuff coming up for you guys. I'm going to be doing Neighbor Jeff's MS250 soon. Uh, and, and I've got a, a really good testimony about a neighbor that actually bought my 025 just now. Uh, he came by last week. I haven't even mentioned him yet. I haven't mentioned his name yet. But uh, both times he was here, we talked a bit. This time, much more extensively, he was here today. His name's Kyle. Uh, neighbor Kyle was in the Army. And I'm not going to say much except that so far... He's definitely a good neighbor. Um, he's been very kind to me. He's made donation to the channel. And I think I think what I'd like to do is with neighbor Jeff's saw, I'm going to give a little bit of a testimony. We're going to rebuke the shitty church. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out how the character of certain people, at least right now in my life, what, what's right about it. Okay? Uh... We, I do talk a lot about the character that's wrong, but I also talk a lot about the character that's right. It's just you hear more of the character that's wrong because there's more of us being shitty than there is being good. But uh, I'm really excited to tell you guys about Neighbor Jeff. I mean Neighbor Kyle. I'm just kidding, Neighbor Kyle. I called him Neighbor Jeff today. I don't know why. But he did. We sat We sat and talked in the yard here for a couple hours today probably. And it was, uh, it was uplifting. It was good. It was positive. And uh, that's why Neighbor's... John Saul sat on my bench for a couple hours because I was talking to another neighbor. All right, so we've got lots of little things to do. I noticed I did your dirty neighbor, John, John, Jonathan. I left dirt in your in your uh, saw. Did you dirty, buddy? You didn't pay for the deluxe package, but I still did you dirty. I shouldn't have left dirt in your dirty saw. Okay, so we're just gonna put our chain tensioner on. You've got a couple components on this. The, there's there's multiple different styles. Okay, please understand that you guys, multiple different styles of this chain tensioner. Okay, uh, this one in particular, you're going to have this plastic piece here that's going to slide into this groove there, and then your whole bolt is going to slide down like that, but there is also this piece you have to consider, okay, and this actually goes up under here like so, okay, I'm sorry, I did you dirty, uh, I, I, I did you dirty, I didn't mean that, <laughs> that's incorrect. So sorry. It's been a while since I've done one of these, damn it. Okay, let's see here. Let's figure it out together, okay? So I know that goes like that. Let me back this up a bit. So we can see in here. Our screw's not very long. Okay. It only can go that way. But that doesn't really work with our chain tensioner. I suppose it does. Okay, there we go, neighbors. That was right. It's only going to allow it to go so far. Okay, there we go. thought that was correct. I feel like there's something else that's supposed to go in there. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I think that's correct. Okay. And then we have two little screws that hold that in. And unfortunately, damn it, I don't know where they are. I've got his god plate screw right there. These are not it. Uh, Jonathan had some of his saw off when he came over. So I just have to find the right hardware. That looks like muffler hardware. It is in the clutch. Okay. I wonder if Jonathan Luda did me dirty and didn't give me the right hardware. Because I'll tell you what, neighbors, I don't see it. I brought extra stuff over here for his saw because it had a lot of burn up stuff on it. But I don't see the chain tensioner hardware. I've got extra screws, but we're going to have to find them. So I'm going to have to pause you, neighbors. Okay? I'm so sorry. Got to pause you. Okay, neighbors. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, neighbors. I cannot find the proper screws. I don't know if his did not have the proper screws. I've put these temporarily, but I'm going to have to look at his footage because I have all his parts right here. And I don't see, I know these are a flathead screw, uh, and they're they're not as big a head, and I don't see them anywhere um, in any of his hardware or the additional hardware that I grabbed for this saw. 
Uh, so for now, we're just going to put other things together. That just means we can't put our guide plate over this. Um, but I don't think it interferes with us doing anything else on his software right now. Um, and so we'll just continue with something else. We've got his intake boot on. Okay, we've got to go ahead and start building this out. Um, however, we need to get his handle on first uh, because we, we need to go ahead and, and vacuum pressure test this saw. Um, and so in order to do that, we put his new AV mounts in. But I really want to show you guys something. I remember I left this intentionally on his saw because I want to teach you why I remove these uh, these covers, these trigger covers. Okay, why I go in here and and why this is part of refurbishing a saw more often than not it needs to be okay um i want to show you that that is the disgustingness okay that's in there and that's why these get worn out and and that's why things get worn out because imagine like putting sand on this and then moving that a hundred times a day uh with vibration it wears out your plastic more all these things uh, we, we, we have to think about these things when we work on this kind of stuff. Okay, so I try to go that extra mile for your neighbor because that, that stuff needs to be cleaned out. I mean, look how much stuff is in there. Okay, that's why his trigger did not move properly. Uh, this thing did not work right. And I was looking. I also needed to go in here because I'm looking at his throttle lever and it looked it looked crooked. But I think it was just uh, pushed down in a bad way. So now we know. See, I even had another throttle lever here. Because I thought he was going to need a new one. But I don't think he does. I think it's okay. And so we'll clean this up. And then we'll be right back. Alright, here you are, neighbor Jonathan. There you go. Isn't that a lot better, buddy? Okay, nice and clean for you, neighbor. Okay, there we go. Alright, so the thing is, sometimes I will take the trigger out. Sometimes I will not. Uh, his is in really good condition. And his spring down there is really clean um, with just the air. And so I don't need to take it out. And it does make it easier. But when you take these out, a lot of people will try to put that spring that's right there. They'll try to put that whole thing right around here and hook it here and then bend that spring underneath this. Because when you do that, in theory, this can still work. But the problem is then there's no spring to move this part of the trigger. Okay, so it doesn't work. So this, you just push your spring down, set your trigger in your grooves. Okay, and then that spring clips in right down there. Okay, uh, and then I'm just going to hold that in place. While I test it, you've got to line everything up. Okay. And that's working fine. Okay. So we're okay there. I just feel something grabbing a little bit somewhere. I notice it springs a little off track back there. There we go. Much better. Okay, great. So now the simplest thing to do for me is I'll just kind of hold this right here with my thumb right there, okay? On the 028s anyways, and on most models, I'll hook that in there. Uh, and then I just shoot shoot for it. Whoops. I shoot for it. Usually I just shoot for it, but I don't usually miss that, okay? Hold it in place before you screw it and check everything again. See, we're not working. Something's grabbing, okay? Because our, our thing automatically got caught. Here we go. Okay. And then we'll put our screw in. And once we have our carburetor on, we'll check all that again. And if there's an issue, we just got to remember back to what just happened. It potentially could be that. Now, I had Loctite. And it's got a mess with me digging for those screws, darn it. See, you guys, I try so hard to organize and set up properly for you. And then because I can't recall if his saw didn't have the right hardware with it or not. And because the right hardware is not in his box or his bin, um... I've I've gone astray and everything's a mess now. I'm messy, neighbors. I'm so sorry. I don't see my Loctite. It's probably right in front of my face. I've got to pause you again, neighbors. All right, what are we on? Take 42, neighbors. Got the Loctite. Just going to put a little Loctite in here. See? And now you're zoomed in again because I paused. Damn it. A little Loctite in here. Okay. A little extra insurance. Okay, it's security. Okay. That's all. It'll come out. Damn it. All right, put that flathead screw in. Ba boom. Screw that bad boy in right there. 
Guten tight. Remember, German chainsaw, Guten tight. Specifications. There you go. That's all working. Okay. I don't know what's going on with his ground wire here. Uh, they're usually bronze or brass or whatever that is. I don't know. Copper. I don't know what it is. But they're not this. Um, but they don't have the big long wire like this. Lead wire. at steel. So we're going to leave it and see what happens. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put his tank on. Okay. Just like that. And we will work this in between these two brand new AV mounts. It's going to be tight because they're brand new. But I can't see. I don't know. I just can't never see no more neighbors. It's crazy. Okay, there we go. I think I got it in there. I did. Okay. So now, my paper has crinkled on me. Alright. Uh, I've got to get the impulse hose hooked up here. Before I do this. Okay. I'll have the intake boot I've got to get through. Uh, neighbor John's rubbers are actually in really good condition. I reuse this fuel line because it's an OEM and they don't make this no more. Um, so we're going to give it a shot. Uh, his impulse hose seems really good to me as well. They don't make that anymore. Um, and so I'm going to give it a shot. I think they're okay. His intake boot I definitely believe is okay. It's in, it's in good condition. It's pliable. It's not too, too pliable. Um, I actually have a trick that I'm going to be using in the future on these intake boots to show you. I should have done it this time uh, instead of fighting with it. I recalled a trick I used to know and plus I actually learned another trick as well. I just have to make the tools to do it. Ow, got my finger. Your saw bit me, neighbor John. If I remember right, your damn spikes bit me. Uh, when we took your saw apart, why is your saw doing me dirty, neighbor? Maybe I'm not supposed to be working on it yet. Okay, as I've said in the past, I don't love grabbing these with pliers, you guys. If you do, you've got to be real careful. You don't want to over tighten your grip on them. Uh, you, you just want to take it a little bit at a time. If you over tighten your grip by grabbing it by the lip, you're going to damage that lip. So you've got to be careful. Uh, it might look like I'm forcing it and ripping on it and stuff. I'm really not. I know it looks like that on camera, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm being very gentle. I'm like grabbing it like I would be willing to grab my finger, okay? And that's why the pliers will slip off because if you grab it too tight, especially with the, the teeth, needle nose, uh, you can get into trouble. Okay, so there's that. All right, our impulse hose is already through on this side. Okay, and that's all I'm going to hook up. I'm not going to screw this down yet because we're going to vac pressure test it. What I'll do is actually, you know what? I think I will. I will, I will because I think we're okay on the vac pressure test aspect. And I don't want what just happened to happen again. Um, it almost slipped out. Okay, so we have got Neighbor John's hardware. Okay, I did find him a ground wire. That's right. I found him a used one off of one of my saws. Okay. Um, I have his hardware here. I had it on the bench. And once again... I'm perplexed. I had specifically John Luna's hardware up here. And now I've got extra hardware. Don't know why, neighbors. This is his right here. Okay. All right. This is why I don't love when saws come to me apart. Um, this this stuff was not off the saw, but but the saw had a lot of stuff that was off of it. Okay, so let's take our four screws. We have one go through here. Uh, 
I'm not Loctiting these in case I have to take this all back apart. All right, there's that. There are two in the front here. Just kind of get your hole lined up there. Whoops. Okay, uh, that clicking is, this is not an impact drill, you guys. It's just at a very low torque setting that I found is just shy of where I need most of my screws on my saw. And then I will go back uh, at the end and check them um, with my hand driver, okay? So I'll just go back and check them with this. And they're almost always perfect at that setting. They just need a slight snug sometimes and that's it. So that drill has worked out really well compared to the DeWalt impact I was having to use before. Um, so thank you neighbors that buy my chit like neighbor John Luna. That's why I'm putting a bunch of free chit on his saw. Why? Because I have the used chit. I can't get the new chit. And even if I could, his bill's already outrageous. Okay. In, in comparison to what one of these saws sells for. Um, his saw is up there toward what I sell these for. So, um, had a bunch of used stuff and 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 he he buys a lot of stuff from me he buys parts he buys saws um he brings me stuff <laughs> and so i gave my neighbor some free stuff on his saw because he deserves it that's why thank you neighbors like neighbor john that buy my stuff so i can buy drills like that milwaukee okay neighbors make my life better thank you Well, this one does not want to line up. It's doing me dirty, neighbors. There we go. I think I got it. Oh, I think it's not. It's doing me dirty. Real dirty. Okay, there we go. I think we got it now. Ah. This is why I don't like flatheads. I hate them. I really hate them. I know this is not a big screwdriver, but even a big screwdriver, I struggle with flatheads. I just don't like them. I hate Phillips are worse. Uh, because as everybody knows, they strip out. Boy, that thing did me dirty. Didn't want to go in. Okay, there we go. Um, actually, I've got to turn this, this grommet a little bit. Damn it. There we go. Okay. We don't want that rubbing against our tank here. Okay, there we go. Now that that's done, now we can go ahead and put a spark plug in. Now, he did want me to give him a better spark plug because he had a Chinese spark plug. But for purposes of vac pressure testing... Um, and I don't love pulling spark plugs in and out. Uh, I'm going to use this spark plug uh, just for a test plug, okay? Is all we're going to do. Uh, this this one really isn't even rated big enough for this saw. Uh, I believe that the Super required a 7 spark plug. It's only 6. And so like it, it would be like RCJ6Y, uh, this, this plug, this Chinese plug, instead of an RCJ7. And that's the heat resistance for the plug. The reason I don't like taking spark plugs in and out, one is because if you don't keep your threads clean, they strip out a lot, spark plug on small engines. And two, this little washer here, uh, let me get you a new plug. This is the one we're gonna put on his saw, okay? We've got a new muffler gasket, new needle cage bearing, uh, the brand new AV mounts, which I gave you the port number for. Uh, we're going to use an NGK uh, BPMR 7A spark plug. They have a crush washer on them. And oftentimes when you reuse your spark plug, you don't tighten it enough. And you get an air leak right there. And that seeks, kills, and destroys your chainsaw. So that's why I don't like reusing them, neighbors. I do. But I also prefer to put them in with either Loctite or, or just a, a tiny bead of uh, like... Uh, RTV silicone or something just to help ensure that the threads are sealed up and you don't have an air leak there, okay? 
That's it. Now these, I definitely don't love putting these in right now in case I got to take the saw apart, so I'm not going to. We're going to go ahead and back pressure test it. And to do that, we need our muffler, just the rear part of our muffler. Okay, that's going to act as our plate. All right, we need a rubber slide like this, like so. Okay. And what we'll do is take two of our muffler bolts. I also got to rebuild a clutch for him. All right. Yep, there we go. And I got to charge him. I forgot to put his darn muffler gasket on his invoice. So I got to do that too. Okay. I'm loving neighbor, but I can't pay for the $4 muffler gasket. All right. Let's put those in. You don't need to put the gasket or anything on for this part of the job. And we'll just get those started. Okay. Okay, and then we'll drop this slide back there just like so okay mistakes take forever we don't need this uber tight so we'll just snug it up okay there we go now I have a specialty flange for this side uh, I know you guys might not have that um, you've seen me do this multiple times, and so for sake of time of the video, I'm going to pause. Okay, so here we go, neighbors. i got everything set up to do the vacuum pressure test on John Leto's 028 Super. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, hook our vacuum pressure pump up, and we're going to go ahead and pull a vacuum. And actually, the service manual says that these need to be able to do, uh, I think they call it 0.5 bar. Um, we'll let that set for a minute and we'll grab our service manual, which I believe I have out here and I'll tell you exactly what it says. I'll tell you what neighbors, I don't have it. It's inside. I forgot. So either way, we'll just watch this for a few minutes. It's holding pretty good, John Luna. I'm going to make this video a little bit longer just for you, buddy. Because I know you enjoy it. This is your Farmer Tech Seals, bud. That I worked real hard on. I know you've seen the video. Okay, I mean, I'm fairly confident, neighbors. I really should leave it that 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 longer. But I'm going to go ahead and do pressure. um, Because I'm going to go ahead and check with oil anyways on the crankshaft seals. So... We'll go ahead and pump some pressure. It feels very strong. I can usually tell by the way the gauge moves moves if we're doing good on our pressure and everything. Okay, so we're going to leave that and watch it whilst... Oh, I've got my flywheel on this side. I did myself dirty. Um, okay, I'll check this side first. I can check the other side after the fact. Might have to pause you again. Or I'll do it off camera, one or the other. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and put oil both on the lips of our oil seal and around where it sits inside the crankcase. Um, you can do soapy water. The problem is I've had soapy water not present. And so I just go ahead and do it the way they said to do it in the old days. And that was oil. I guess it makes a mess. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm doing it with oil. There we go. It must be getting low. I'll have to let all those bubbles settle out. But I like to go through and pop them. <laughs> That's what I have to do, neighbors. Instead of waste time, I just take me a little pick. And I'll sit there and very carefully pop my little bubbles. Okay. And then what we're doing is we're watching for bubbles to form. 
So that's hard to see if there's bubbles in there. So I've got to kind of eliminate the little bubbles that are there. I definitely have oil all the way around my seal on both, both levels. I have quite a bit of oil in there. And now we'll just uh, sit here and watch it for several minutes and see if any air bubbles form. Because the thing is, you really have to, on these models, I, I, I notice they, they, they oftentimes, and neighbor Ted, you can attest to this if you're watching this video still, bud, uh, if you happen to click on this one, can attest that these things are, are notorious, at least in my history, of having air leaks that you, you can only find vacuum pressure testing the saw at running temperature very quickly, uh, which is a two-man job, Ted will tell you. Uh, you can see his comments on that. Or uh, with with spraying brake parts cleaner with everything exposed very strongly on the crankshaft seal. A lot of times they only present in certain conditions. And so that's why I will sit here for several minutes and just watch this uh, very closely. And so for that, neighbors, I will pause you and I'll just keep watching. And then I'm also going to do the other side and clean up and then we'll come back. All right, so I've got my specialty flange off. I've got my rubber removed. Uh, I've gotten everything out of my way. The only thing I've got to do is take the spark plug out because I don't want to forget that I don't, I'm not reusing this spark plug. Uh, I think neighbor Jonathan said he wanted to just go ahead and put an NGK in it and pay the $6 for it. So that's what we're doing. Um, and boy, I'll tell you what, anybody that's still left, uh, I really am anticipating very soon to be able to go over to neighbor Jonathan's and see some of the projects he's working on. And guess what? This man told me he's got like 16 chainsaws. Uh, and so we get to go see all the chainsaws that he has. I know most of them, but I don't know all of them. Uh, and so we're also going to show you some of the projects he's working on. Um, he does tractors and stuff too as well. So we'll get to see neighbor Jonathan's property and the different things he gets to tinker with. Okay, so here's your brand new muffler gasket. Here's your part number. 1118 that's your 1118. The 028s are the only one in that series. And there's your muffler gasket, okay? Brand new. These are a crushed gasket, you guys, so you're not typically supposed to reuse them once you've taken them off if you don't have to. Okay, if you if you can put a new one on, you should. Because remember, air air blows out this way, and it just it, it messes up the running condition of your chainsaw. You don't want to do it. Okay, neighbors? All right. So, Jonathan Luna, we're going to have to, uh, at some point, hopefully port your muffler. Okay, buddy? Uh, or modify it. I don't know if I should keep calling it porting. People get confused. Modify your muffler. And also clean it. It's rusty, filthy, vile, trashy, and disgusting. And neighbor, I'd love to do it for you, but right now you know I don't have time or the space. Okay? So we'll, we'll tinker on it together in the future. Okay? That's the plan. Alright. Go ahead and do that. I like to just hold my screws in place. And then get them started. Right here. Makes it a little easier. Especially if you can see. Okay, got that one. Whoops. Oh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. No, don't do it. Okay, there we go, neighbors. Ah, I lost it. Damn it. Damn it, dirty. Okay. This is why steel charges you $125 an hour because this is what their techs have to deal with. <laughs> Although they do have slightly better tools than me. Most of them. I do have some good steel tools, but not, not all of them. All right. Tighten those down. I did notice his, his right side over here is a little tight. We take his muffler off again. We're gonna have to clean those threads out better. There we go. Go ahead and tighten that to the gluten tight specifications. Neighbors, I gotta use my other arm because this one's hurting. They're both hurting real bad, but. There we go. Okay. That's it. And then we'll put the face on. And the reason I'm going ahead and doing the muffler right now is because on this saw, it doesn't really get in my way to do it now. Uh, it's rusty, filthy, vile, and nasty, but it is what it is. Okay. We'll make it pretty someday. 
Hopefully, me and Jonathan will. There's that. Uh, his saw did do good on the vacuum pressure test. Everything passed. Uh, everything's great. I didn't do you dirty on your crankshaft seals, neighbor Jonathan. I did your right, neighbor. I believe I did your right anyways. They don't appear to be leaking at all. I took my time. I gave them great care. I have uh, a neighbor telling me that I'm not supposed to grease my bearings. And my service manual says to grease them. So I did. I don't know. I've always done it, never had a problem. We'll see what happens. Okay, now, I thought I took my specialty flange off. I did your dirty neighbors. I did not. My goodness, I did you so dirty. Um, I was going to put his muffler on. I suppose for sake of the length of the video, there's no way I'm going to get this done in another 30 minutes. Um, it really is much slower when I do the footage. We might have to go ahead and finish there. Because I have to rebuild his clutch as well. Okay. Um, I think I was looking. I don't know if I can reuse his, his clutch parts at all. His shoes are a little loose. Uh, there's, there's normally some play there, but not quite that much side to side uh so i've got to look at a good rebuilt clutch i just did and see see how much play it has okay so we'll look and see if we can reuse his parts or not i only have three clutch springs left so hopefully i have a good one for neighbor jonathan's or neighbor eric's other saw uh, <laughs> because the clutch springs are on back order and i don't have any more 028 clutch springs i'm gonna be in trouble all right so I removed that. Get that out of the way. Whoops. I already have my grommet in there. My little metal grommet. Okay. And his is a plastic tank. So it also gets a grommet outside here. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing a bag of Jonathan's hardware. But there just seems to be multiple things missing. Unless he didn't have that grommet there already. Um, they are missing on some saws, but that's okay because I've got a bunch of them and I've got one for him right here. We'll just grab one. So remember, look at that. A brand new one for him right there, like $3. And then again, I'll look at the footage and see if I pulled one up a saw. I can't remember. It's been so long. I waited so long to find out 90% of the parts I ordered are obsolete. And then they sent me the wrong damn ground wires. Okay, so here's a brand new grommet for him. Okay, I think they were $3 or $4 or something like that. I'll look it up. Got my list right there of my prices. Okay, so that goes on there. Just like so. And we got our rebuilt Walboro carburetor. I will continue to do videos on carb stuff for, for you guys in the future as well because there's a lot of good stuff that you don't know that most people don't know about carburetors little tricks that they don't tell us okay there's that we'll go ahead and hook our fuel line up to the bottom here okay just like so ba boom remember we're gonna we're gonna give his oem uh a uh, a shot uh, it was in good condition and they don't make them anymore so <laughs> i thought why not keep the oem hose on there if we can and let it go the rest of its life since it has ceased to exist from steel okay let we just push our throttle back on our carburetor and hook our little hook this is our throttle lever okay we just push just push your throttle back right here on your carburetor and then set that on there Okay, that's all it does. That's it. We didn't need that. I'm happy. I thought his was bad. It's not. Okay, now remember we had our sticky earlier. So we're going to check this. It's working fine. The The choke is on the filter only. And so as long as that's working, our stuff isn't even bolted down. So I'm confident once we bolt it down, we're good to go. Okay, so then we just put our two 8 mil bolts on back here. Our nuts. I'm sorry. Our nuts. Our nuts. Okay, our nuts. All right. And actually, I do believe I was looking at neighbor Jonathan's pickup body and I was looking at his bill as I put the stuff on that he had to pay for today. 
and I thought, boy, I did clean that pickup body thinking I might reuse it for him. And uh, it's in good shape, and so we're going to reuse it. That way he doesn't have to pay me $5 for one. You do have to pay me $6 or $5, I think, Jonathan. That's what I charged you for your spark plug. Because when you brought your saw in, they were still 5 They've raised the price on me. Um, so I've now got to charge 6 Okay, there you go. There's that. Whoops. And then I do believe I can go ahead and put his spark plug in. I've vacuumed. No, I like doing the spark plug after the top cover on this one. It can be a little easier. Uh, these are real pain to get on. When the spark plugs in you've got to kind of bend it up underneath it and push it and so we'll just put that in last okay so now basically neighbors uh we're, we're making fantastic progress on his saw we're going to go ahead and put his shroud on the back of his uh recoil here okay i'm going to about end the video but i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do off the of camera most likely we'll put that on okay we got his uh i've got to go look and figure out uh, on the footage if he had these screws in here or not they do impact the the chain tensioner coming this way just a little bit other than that they don't impact the functionality of anything but i'd like to have the right screws in there especially if the saw came in with the right screws and so we'll check that and then uh we'll rebuild his clutch i've showed you guys how to do the clutch on this saw so i won't have that on footage either most likely uh, we'll put his chain breaking stuff together. Just the little stuff, you neighbors. Okay. Uh, and then at some point, I'll just do a little bit of the final reassembly of his saw, hopefully. Okay. But until then, neighbors, uh, be kind to one another. Everyone's facing a battle. And hey, here is, just in case it's not on camera, here is your needle cage bearing for the 028. Okay. It's 95. It's hard to see this part number. It's 95129332370. This is for your sprocket, right, neighbors? Okay, it's the long one, okay? It's for your sprocket, okay? All right, and that's going to be it. Until next time, neighbors, be kind to one another. Everyone's facing a battle.